Hey guys, Andrew with AP Collectibles here, and we have uh, what I hope, I hope, is a pretty cool video here for you guys. Um, I bought a collection of toys this afternoon. Uh, I found it on OfferUp, it was 20 bucks. Um, we'll get to the reason I bought it in a second, but it had some other cool stuff in it. Um, have some uh, Loot Crate exclusive cars here. Uh, one's from Supernatural, one's from Gone in 60 Seconds, so kind of cool there. Let's just set those off to the side. Um, there are a good amount of books in the box. Uh, here are some highlights. We got some X Men, some Justice League, and some Batman. Um, so, a little added a bonus there. There were uh, a bunch of action figures. Um, here are a couple Dragon Ball Z figures. So, um, yeah, overall, pretty mixed box. Came from a nerdy dad, Dragon Ball Z stuff, uh, X Men stuff, a bunch of superheroes, some loot crate stuff. But the reason I bought the box. The reason I bought this collection was because of the magic cards. Um, I have not opened any of these yet. I have not seen a single card um, in this set other than uh, a, uh, a monolique because it was facing out. But here's what we have. We have some decks, some pre-constructed decks, and some tournament packs um, from early 2000 sets. Uh, Odyssey, Legions, and Onslaught, 2001, 2002, 2003, as well as a deck box here. I have no idea what is inside this box, and a small uh, plastic cylindrical uh, container with some cards there. Um, like I said, I have not opened any of these yet. Uh, we are going to look at them together. Um, these boxes are in excellent condition. Looks like they have been sitting on a shelf for uh, probably a long time. Um, no, no, no real dust on them. Um, they look to be in pretty great condition and uh, that has me hopeful for what is inside. Um, let's talk about these boxes really quick. I think it's probably safe to assume that the contents of these boxes are somewhere here in this collection. Um, so we have two Odyssey pre-constructed decks, Trounce Matic and Pressure Cooker. Uh, Trounce Matic is incredible. It held a really special place in my heart. It was one of the first decks that I played competitive magic with. Um, it is a blue-green threshold themed deck. There are cards like Wild Mongrel and Aquamoeba in here. Um, super fun deck. We also have Pressure Cooker from that same set, uh, Black Red. I'm less familiar with this. Um, yeah, not a whole lot of info on there. Uh, Legions, Morph Mayhem, we have a blue-white deck here. Uh, one of the keyword abilities in Legions was Morph, so I'm not super familiar with this deck in particular, but I'm going to assume there are a bunch of Morph cards in here. Um, and these, for anyone who's not familiar, are tournament packs. Um, they stopped doing these a while back. I think around Alara block is when they stopped, but these had 75 cards in them and were created so you could join a limited tournament at your LGS, and this was all you really needed. If I'm not mistaken, um, so there are 75 cards in here. If I'm not mistaken, the breakdown was something like three rares, 30-ish commons and uncommons, um, and then some lands. Uh, don't quote me on those exact numbers. So um, pretty cool, um, pretty cool product. They, they did stop um, printing them or at least packaging them that way. Um, couldn't tell you why. Um, so yeah, we're getting a little trip down memory, memory lane here. I wanted to point out here, so this is the side of the Legions pack. Uh, remember when fat packs came with novels? Yeah, that was cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see the, on the side of the Onslaught one, too. Uh, booster pack, theme deck, deck box, fat pack with a novel. So cool. Wish they still did that. I really do. Um, and yeah, and then we've got this stuff here. So uh, let's let's jump right in here. Again, I think it's safe to assume that the, the contents of these decks are going to be fairly easy to identify. Um, not all of these are full. Let's see. Um these two feel the fullest, so we'll save those a little bit. Um, and these two feel the most empty, so we're just going to go like that. Um, and let's start with this uh, Onslaught 75 card tournament pack. There are not uh, 75 cards in here. Um, it's about half, so maybe there's like 35 cards in here. Let's see what we find. 
All right. So right off the bat, we've got a rare uh, from Odyssey Nut Collector. Um, one of the earlier squirrel-themed cards. Not a squirrel himself, a druid, um, but pretty cool. And the threshold there, all squirrels get plus two, plus two. So very cool card. Rabid Wolverines. So we're going back to Exodus here. So this is pre all of the sets that we've seen. Rabid Wolverines, Leaf Dancer, Chatter of the Squirrel. We'll set that aside. I believe there were Chatter of the Squirrels in Trounce Omatic. I could be wrong. At the very least, it is a threshold card from Odyssey. Um, we've got some uh, basic lands here. So this is looking like some sort of green deck. Um, basic lands uh, of this vintage, if you will, um, are worth a few cents each. So we're going to hold on to those. Uh, Overrun is a pretty cool card there. Gorilla Packs. We've got some Ice Age. We're getting, we're going back in time a little bit. Looks like, yeah, some kind of green deck here. Okay, okay. Uh, Starlit Sanctum. This card goes a long way in um, Cleric Tribal. Black, white, great EDH card. Probably not worth as much as it used to be, but for a while, I think this was up there. It's like a five or six dollar card. So we'll check on that um, at the end. We'll see how we did. Some more forests. This looks like, there we go. So uh, Griffin Canyon, I believe also worth a few bucks, uh, maybe more. Hopefully I'm not making a fool of myself. Uh, it adds a colorless mana to your mana pool. You can also tap it to untap a Griffin and that Griffin gets plus one, plus one. So again, another card that uh, got some life with uh, EDH and some um, Griffin Tribal. So we'll check on that one as well. Bunch of forests, maybe the rest forests, not quite yet. Multani's Presence, we've got some Urza, Twig Walker, Aggressive Urge, Snarling Underag. There's my buddy, Nimble Mongoose, the bread and butter of that Trounsomatic deck that we uh, talked about. Rushwood Dryad, Croson Avenger, Elephant Ambush, Springing Tiger. Cool. So we got some basic forests from, let's see, all from, no, some Onslaught, mostly mostly odyssey there um and then cards of note from this first one we got the nimble mongoose the griffin canyon the starlet sanctum nah cheddar squirrel's cool and the nut collector there so this is from the onslaught box let's keep it moving with uh the pressure cooker deck box this one might be the least full of them all let's see what we got here we have a braids cabal minion uh band in edh um I don't know what that's going to translate to in value. Let's see here. Cover of Darkness. Two mana. As Cover of Darkness comes into play, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type have fear, which means they cannot be blocked except by artifact and or black creatures. Let's see. Dirge of Dread. A Cursed Centaur. A Nurid Merc Diver. Swat. So, okay, so this looks like Maybe two 40 card decks, a black and a green is kind of what we're, I'm starting to see here. Baron Moore, Smother, not a bad card. Smokespew Invoker, Fallen Cleric, Noxious School. Oh, cool. Uh, it is curling, curled because of the age here, but we have a foil crystal quarry. Um, add a colorless. And then tap five and it to add one of each color to your mana pool. I have no idea the value of this card. Um, but considering the whole box and everything here costs 20 bucks, I say we are on our way to breaking even. Prexian Reclamation, a uh, pretty cool card. Only costs one, returns creatures from your graveyard to your hand, and is beautiful artwork. Absolutely beautiful artwork. RK Post, one of my favorites. He did Morphling. He did Avatar of Woe and probably like 200 other cards. Love this artwork. We'll set that one aside. Prexian Defiler, Battlefield Percher, Vicious Hunger, Belb, uh, say Battlefield Percher, and Belb's Percher. I thought I mis uh, misspoke, but there you go. Misshapen Fiend, Mind Swords. Uh, this card did work back in the day. Alley Grifters, Unearth is another cool one. We'll set that one aside there. Vicious Hunger, Insubordination, Prexian Reaper, Prexian Monitor, Undertaker, Spectre's Whale, Slinking Scourge, a bunch of kind of cool black commons. No, no swamps. Okay, so I was wrong. Not, not a deck. The Onslaught box, that blue, uh, green, sorry, uh, could have been a deck, maybe 40 cards. I didn't count, but... Um, 
cool. All right, so we're gonna call this the crown jewel right now. I think Braids is up there, but yeah, so we've got some cards to check on there. And uh, let's move on to Trounce Omatic. Oh, I see the cool, cool card on top here. Probably not worth much. Oh, but it's seventh edition, so maybe. Uh, seventh edition cards, let's see, we've got some whiteboard. Yeah, so seventh edition cards, let's see, there we go, perfect. Seventh edition cards, <laughs> as you can see, are white borders, except for the foils. The foils are black borders. Um, I feel like this could have been in like a welcome deck or like a how to play beginner deck for seventh edition. So uh, anytime you see a seventh edition foil it is very cool, but um, we'll have to check on this one. From seventh edition there, we have a monstrous growth and a rampant growth. Cool cards. That might be worth a few pennies. We'll check on it. Naf's Asp, Tranquility, Wall of Wood. We've got some more early 2000s forests. Ivy Elemental, another rare. Uh, I loved this card as a kid. Very cool. Sylvan Might, Amphibious Kavu. Some more forests. Oh, more squirrels! Let's set those aside. Maybe we'll get a play set out of here. Oops, uh, Rites of Spring. Forest, another Sylvan Might. Sulam Jin, Serpentine Kavu, Crown of Vigor, Spitting Gorna, Run Wild, Enchantress's Presence. We got some, some dollars. Two or three, if I had to guess off the top of my head, it's been a while since I have looked into Enchantress. There's been so many reprints that have hit this card fairly hard, so two to three is my estimate, probably lower. Curse and Tusker, Wing Snare, Horned Troll, Howling Wolf. Fertile Ground, Simeon Grunts, Mystic Tree Folk, Yavimaya Scion, Rabid Elephant, Woodland Druid, Cartographer. I love this card. It's beautiful. I love the artwork. When it comes into play, return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Not groundbreaking. Decent in its time and standard. I just love the artwork. Uh, I have a foil version uh, in my uh, trade binder that I just like to look at. Wild Dogs, Simeon Grunts, Wild Elephants, Spitting Gorna, Cross and Tusker. Very underrated common. Very underrated. Blanchwood Tree Folk, Roar of the Worm, Spined Worm, Rowan Tree Folk, some Portal coming through. Iron Root, Tree Folk, Deep Reconnaissance, Seton's Sire, Wild Mongrel, and Werebear, Bear Attack. Okay, so we're hitting some cards now from straight from that Trounce O Matic deck there. Wild Mongrel and Werebear, more bread and butter cards from that deck. Um, some more recursion. Cool. Uh, we have a Holistic Wisdom here. Three mana, tap two, and remove a card in your hand from the game. Return to a card from your graveyard to your hand if it shares a type, artifact, creature, enchantment, etc., uh, with a card removed this way. I feel like there was a deck uh, that did feature this card kicking around out there. Um, I'm not sure of the price. Beautiful artwork. Anytime you have anything by Rebecca Gay, in my opinion, you are holding a beautiful card. So, very cool. Muscle Burst, Iron Root Tree Folk, and a Foil Forest. Very cool. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad there. We'll set these aside. All right. Let's see. So, we're, do th we're through three boxes now. We have two more, and these are the fullest of the two. This are, these are both almost full. Let's hit this uh, Morph Mayhem. Oh, and one of my favorite cards of all time is on top, Bubbling Beebles. Uh, I wanted to make a Beebles tribal deck way before it was cool. <laughs> um, very cool card. Oh, and there's a little brother. Bouncing Beebles. Uh, for a long time, these were the only two Beeble cards that existed. Uh, some people liked them. I think they came back in the future unset. There may have even been like an unplaneswalker or something that made Beebles. Uh, Beebles, yeah. Scrivener, just like Cartographer, but for instance, and it uh, costs considerably more. Peak is a cool card. Spy Network, Snap. So we've got some uh, pretty good commons here. Title Visionary, Wandering Eye, Araxithid, uh, Vigilant Drake, another Bouncing Beebles, Frantic Search, more good uh, blue commons here. I'd like to see that rarity symbol change. We've got a foil coming up. It's an island. Very cool. 
cunning deluge is an uncommon gush man the commons from this era were so good so good there's a rare weaver of lies uh, two of them and chrome shell crab these both have morph they are both blue um i think it's a pretty safe bet that these were the rares in that morph mayhem deck all of deceit mist form mutant Mediterranean soldier careful study good commons predict good uncommon riptide chronologist Void Mage Apprentice, Will Bender, another one of my uh, favorite cards from back in the day. I'll set that one aside. Bunch more commons. Zanam Dijon, uh, Jin, another cool one there. Bunch of islands. Echo Tracer, Misform Dreamer, Trickery Charm. Yeah, so mostly blue commons there a little disappointing because that box was full um and here we have our last box tournament pack from odyssey 75 cards and it looks like it's about that pretty full here so let's see what we find first card is a circle of protection green we got so we got some white going on here reviving dose Lawbringer, Angelic Curator, Defender of Law, Lightbringer, Disciple of Grace, Remote Farm. That was a really cool cycle of lands there from the Mercadian Masks set. Crown of Awe, Oromancer, Gallantry. Okay, we're hitting some planes. This is a foil. Another gin. This is the Ruham gin. Dominaria's Judgment. We've got a rare. Three mana, instant, the end of turn, creators you control, gain protection from white if you control a plains, blue if you control an island, so on and so forth. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, I'll have to check on that. I'm not super familiar with this card. Do not remember seeing it. Um, some cycle lands, chain of silence, oblation, original printing is pretty cool. Probably not worth much because this deck for a while was printed in like every white EDH pre-com they released, um, but still a good card uh, and pretty cool to see it in the original printing. Got some beautiful, this was one of my favorites as a kid, uh, some beautiful old school planes there. Disciple of Grace, Gus Cloak Runner, Glory Seeker, Daru Healer, Daunting Defender, Pacifism, Pacifism. A bunch of white cards, whip quarters, some glory seekers, some more planes. Let's see if there's any magic hiding in the back of this stack, no pun intended. Soul Warden, pretty cool original print printing there. Uh, part of the Soul Sisters uh, Infinite Life combo deck uh, that plays uh, play, played in Pauper, played in Modern. I'm sure it's played in, you know, any, every format. Chroma's Blessing, and there we go. Okay, we are through the boxes, through the cardboard boxes. These are the cards that we're going to check on, that we like, that are pretty, that are shiny. Um, but let's make some more room here. Let's get these lands out of the way, and this fat stack here. All right, let's check out the deck box. Thank you, Eric, for selling me your collection. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, some Pokemon cards. And and Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so some Pokemon card. A single uh, Pokemon card. Uh, we have an unknown T. Uh, pretty cool there. Probably looks to be the only Pokemon card um, in the box there. And we've got some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You can sell by the side there. Some of these are in better condition than others. <laughs> Let's see. Let's split that stack right about there let's see so these look like they have been pretty well played um i am not as familiar with um Yu-Gi-Oh as i am with the other games um i recognize some artworks here but really couldn't tell you what we're looking at so we'll pull the shiny ones card destruction we've got a foil there gravity axe mask of brutality yeah, these are all pretty beat up here. Trap hole. Be gone, Maeve. Another trap hole. Guardian Grarl. Luster Dragon. Elemental Hero Blade Edge. 
Swift Gaia, the Fierce Knight. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you what set these are from, really, but uh, I recognize this artwork. These are, must be pretty old. Miba, Ketsufuma, Dark Blade. Yeah, there we go. And then these are uh, in a little bit better condition. Maybe, maybe get away with Near Mint? Lightly played, at least, yeah. Pulling the rug, kind of cool foiling there. <laughs> Watt pheasant, lock cat, beast rising, final psychic ogre, damage eater. Yeah, eat that damage. Let's see, yeah, not much else that's looking too shiny there. Okay, so some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We'll have to check on these. Uh, if I made a fool out of myself because I skipped over some money cards, please let me know in the comments. And uh, let's finish things out here with this plastic container here. This pile, I saw a couple cards from when I first got it. I saw this land, and there is a somewhere in here. Maybe I, I picked up the wrong one. There's a Monoleak. Ravaged Highlands, pretty cool. So we got some red cards finally. Firebolt. Back to black here. Back in black. Sick and tired. Annihilate. Engineered Plague. Very cool card. Um, tribal Hate. The two creature type. Those creatures get minus one, minus one. That's lightly played. Decent card there. Well of Discovery. Six mana at the end of your turn. If you control no untapped lands, draw a card. Uh, this card got a whole lot better when they got rid of Mana Burn. Um, but still not super great. Thran War Machine, Thran Weaponry, Four Mana Echo. You may choose not to untap it during your untap phase. You, if you pay two and tap it, all creatures get plus two, plus two, as long as it remains tapped. Interesting. Some more basic lands. We've got some swamps. Ooh, a foily swamp with a flower that little bromeliad flower there this this land here this foil version of this artwork um probably gonna fetch a couple bucks there so we'll set that aside uh it's got a big nick on the top there i don't know if you guys can see that but oh well okay we've got some cards and cases here so let's grab those and maybe we'll maybe we'll oh, i don't want to see anything i don't want to see anything maybe we'll well Rick saw this one because there's one on each side. Maybe we'll save these for last here. Um, well, we've got Massacre. Looks like two Massacres. Maybe there's a third card in here. Um, no, two Massacres. And let's see. All right. What do we got going on here? So there's the, yeah, there it is. There's the Monoleak. As featured in the World Championship Seattle 98. Maybe we'll get some more Champions cards in here. That would be cool. So we got Monolik, Slinking Serpent, Galena's Knight. Ah, the Grizzly Baron. <laughs> uh, my German accent is awful, but we have a German Grizzly Bear. Lightning Rift, Childhood Horror. Pretty iconic artwork there. This was the, where did we put it? Yeah, the cover art for that pressure cooker theme deck. So that probably came from that box. Raven Guild Initiate, Shime of Night, Keeper of the Dead. That is creepy artwork. Dragon Shadow, Stalking Bloodsucker. Bunch, Commons. Ooh, Cabal Pit. That's kind of cool. Screams of the Dead. Here we've got Ghastly Remains. Uh, three black, zero, zero, zombie with Amplify one. Get your upkeep. If Ghastly Remains is in your graveyard, you may pay three and return it to your hand. So some mediocre zombie recursion. Coming up to a card in a sleeve. Oh, I think Eric just loved Massacre. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> We've got a playset of Massacres all sleeved up. Croson Drover, an 8th edition Rod of Ruin. Faces of the Past. I almost skipped over it. Three mana, enchantment. Whenever a creature is put in a graveyard from play, tap or untap all creatures that share a creature type with it. What do you do with this card? Teleport. I mean, I guess you create a whole bunch of tokens that match your tribal, you sack a token to something, you give all your creatures vigilance, you uh, abuse 
their activated abilities. Um, the more I talk about it, this card is sounding better and better. So we'll check on that. Tree top scout, we're back in the green. Ancient Ooze, seven mana, power and toughness equal to the total converted mana cost of other creatures you control. If it's your only creature, it comes in, it dies. But if you've got a bunch of others, this guy gets big in a hurry. Wing Shards, pretty good card. Some Swamps. Shepherd of Rot. So some more zombie action going on here. We've got a Bog Wreckage. Bunch of black cards coming through. Soulless one. Famished Ghoul. Repentant Vampire. Five mana, three, three, flying. Whenever, start, whenever a creature dealt damage by Repentant Vampire. Put in a graveyard, pull this one on it. Threshold, tap it, destroy target black creature. Hey, not bad. It's got a Terror on Legs, Gem Palm Polluter, Scion of Darkness. I uh, really wish they had kept the creature type avatar. Uh, super, super cool there. Innocent Blood, great card. Shadow Blood Egg, Baron Moor. Some beautiful mountains. Crash, Dwarven Strike Force. Some more mountains. We're getting towards the end here. This is our last pile. Some upside down cards. Oh, we'll just do this. My ogre, there's a foil card coming up. It's a mountain. And a Lightning Hounds. Now, this Lightning Hounds is a promo. Uh, we have the little logo here. I believe this was a book promo. Um, I'll have to double check on that. Lightning Hounds, foil break open. The Kabu Scout. We've got some Kabus here. Ah, Tangarth, Telerim hero. Uh, five mana, four four legendary min Minotaur. Uh, he has vigilance, but it's worded uh, before vigilance was a keyword. And then for two and tapping itself, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature, and that creature deals damage equal to its power to Tangarth. So if this card uh, was reprinted now, it would have Vigilance, and it would say tap two and it to fight target other creature. So two abilities that became keyworded abilities later on. Rock Badger, not much to say about that, but Badgers are cool. Got some Viashino, Fever Charm. Trained Org, seventh edition. Uh, seems like another card that would come along with the thorn elemental that foil thorn elemental we found um in like a beginner box could could be all right we have a non-foil crystal quarry so that's pretty cool getting towards the end here and i kind of have a feeling it's going to be black commons and uncommons until the end Blood Vassal, Skulking Fugitive, Cackling Witch. We've got some Swamps. All right, and we are here to Cards in Sleeves. <laughs> and what would we expect from Eric? Nothing less. We are up to uh, <laughs> Massacre 5 and 6. Seize the Day. There's another rare card. Got some backwards cards i don't really know how to do this there we go all right so there are a bunch of cards in this sleeve we've got a saber tooth neshoba but there are uh probably about five four or five cards in here let's hope for rares oh i bet it's a play set it is a play set of saber tooth neshoba trample protection from blue protection from red six mana for a five five beast Let's see, same thing here, yeah, indentured gin. Two copies of that in a sleeve. I wonder if we're gonna see the same thing again. We sure are. Indentured gin, there we go. Oh, yeah, Noble Templar, Slurry Mutation, Rust of Knowledge, some more massacres, two more. So we have two play sets of massacres. Graveborn Muse. Four mana, three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of zombies you control. It draws you a lot of cards. It costs you a lot of life. It can get out of hand in a hurry. And it is a zombie itself. So this card, in and of itself, lose a life, draw a card every turn. 
Not bad. Foil Goblin Warstrike. Uh, yep, yeah, more indentured gins. So Eric really liked massacres and really liked indentured gins. A Fantatog, a Lacolith Grunt, an Urham Jin, and some more red cards. Uh, I wish this was from Legends and not from Chronicles. That would have been a uh, very different. Sorry, Arabian Nights and not Chronicles. That would have been a very different, a very different pull. And we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five cards in sleeves. I, uh, sorry, in uh, top loaders. Don't know what these are. I have not seen them. I'm hoping that the cards in here were protected, are protected for a reason. Let's start with a Bloodfire Kavu. Absolutely nothing special about this. I'm just making sure it's the only card. It is the only card in there. A Bloodfire Kavu. Okay, I see the pattern here. Um, there are three more cases. So I'm assuming we're going to get a play set of Bloodfire Kavu here. And uh, maybe something different in the last one. Maybe a fifth copy. So there we go. Four Bloodfire Kavus. And the last card. The last card that we will see here. <laughs> a Vidalian Zombie. Not sure why those were in uh, top loaders. Uh, it seems like Eric would have been more likely to uh, put some massacres in there. Uh, I don't know. All right, so yeah, let's set aside uh, all of this bulk. I am going to uh, pause the video here, pause the stream. We're going to look up some cards online, come back with a little recap, uh, and see how, uh, how far our $20 went. I've got a pretty strong feeling that we, uh, on the cards alone, will have at least broken even, but I will let you know shortly. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I sat down with TCG Player. I looked at some cards here, and uh, for $20, we got some value. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Uh, the only Pokemon card in the set, Unknown T, moderately played condition at best. I listed it for $0.19. Cents. So grand total on Pokemon cards, $0.19. Cents. Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Pulling the Rug, Ultra Rare. This is the first card I listed from the box. Uh, I listed it in, uh, I believe, near mint condition. It's pretty solid. It's pretty close to mint. And it came in at $64. So right off the bat, tripled our money right here. The rest of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, uh, I listed the rares. They are in... Uh, damaged to moderately played condition across the board. Um, of these cards here, I think the most expensive one listed for like 49 cents. So uh, I wrote this off here, uh, not in my calculations to the grand total. Let's get to the magic cards. Uh, we had some cards that I thought were hits that really just weren't each of these rares here. I thought we'd get something for uh, all less than 50 cents. The Oblation came in at like 29 cents. I think same thing with Dominaria's Judgment. So not a lot of value here. The big money came from the Crystal Quarry. Now, like we saw in the earlier in the video, it is curled. But it is otherwise, I would say, mint condition, near mint, other than the curling. Near mint, cheapest listed on TCG Player, was $120. I put this one up in Lightly Played because of the curl. Hopefully the uh, top loader will do something about that for $70. So again, single card, just like the pull the rug, uh, has more than tripled our money. Regular crystal, crystal uh, quarry listed for seven, sees the day for five, grave born muse for two, thorn elemental foil, uh, probably from a beginner set like I thought, listed for a dollar. Lightning Hounds, uh, I called it a book promo. It's listed on TCG Player as a media promo, grand total of 29 cents, I think. Same thing with braids, like 50 cents, if that. It changes his presence, original printing, benefit of the original printing here, $4. Holistic Wisdom, $6. Soul Warden, $0.89. Cents. 
Uh, I talked a big game about this foil swamp being worth a couple bucks. Uh, turns out we also had a foil plains, forest, mountain, and island. And of the five foil lands, the swamp listed for the uh, second to least. Swamp listed for three sixty nine. Plains for a dollar nineteen, forest for seven ninety nine, mountain for eight ninety nine, and this island, which I did not pick up on at first, seventh edition, seventh edition foils, uh, listed at twelve ninety nine. Um, I don't recall the exact conditions of each of these. None of them came in near mint. Uh, the swamp was moderately played. I believe the forest was moderately played, and the other three are light, but. Uh, pretty big money from the, the basic foils there. Faces of the past, 86 cents. I really thought this was going to be worth more because the more I thought about it and the more I read it, the better this card got in my mind. But uh, 86 cents. Ancient Ooze listed for two. Sign of the Darkness for 250. Griffin Canyon. Oh, I didn't put it in my notes. It came in about $3. About $3 for the Griffin Canyon. Uh, it's in moderately played condition. Could have been better, but still, solid pull for a card like that. Sarwit Sanctum was another one. Uh, uh, big swing and a miss on my initial assessment here. I would have guessed, and I think I said 2 to $3. Uh, it came in at $0.19. Cents. Nut Collector, the very first card that we saw from the unboxing, came in at $7.00. Uh, and a big surprise here, Cover of Darkness, uh, it's, it's near mint. It's pretty pristine across the board here. I did not see this coming. $38. $38. If you are super good at mental math and have been paying attention to every single number that has come out of my mouth so far, we have a grand total just on these cards here. These cards that I've listed, some bulk rares, some money rares, 